The biggest and most frequently asked question we get as a team is, where should I live in Austin, Texas? And in this video, we are going to do our best to answer that. Now, obviously, that depends largely on your lifestyle and where you're going to be working, what your situation is, and what you'd like to be close to. So what we're going to do is speed through a lot of the most popular areas within the greater Austin area for people who are relocating, give you a general idea of what they're like, what to expect, and hopefully educate you and inform you in the process so that you can arrive at your own conclusion. If that's what you clicked on this video to learn about, stay tuned because we're getting after it right now. Hello again, guys and gals. If this is your first time to the channel, my name is Frank and I'm part of a team at the award-winning JP Goodwin Brokerage right here in the exemplary Austin, Texas. Each and every week, we put out tons of new content all in regards to living in Austin, Texas, whether it be the pros and cons, vlog tours of certain areas and suburbs, comparisons of cities and states, and so much more. So if you haven't already, consider subscribing to this channel and ringing that little bell so that you're notified each and every time we put out a new video. In addition, we get reach outs all the time from people just like you who are in need of our help when relocating to this great city of Austin, Texas. We love learning about your lifestyle and placing you in that perfect spot, making your move as smooth as possible. But the only way we can do that is by you reaching out to us. So do not hesitate whether you're nine days away or 90, go ahead and shoot us a text, send us an email, give us a call any day of the week, any time of day. So let's get right to it and talk about where you might want to live in Austin, Texas. For starters, a little bit of a backstory. Austin, first and foremost, for those of you who didn't already know, was just a small college town. And unlike Dallas, unlike Houston, it really has stayed that way. Dallas and Houston are these metropolis type cities that grew according to their population, to their popularity. Whereas Austin, so many people flocked here and it just exploded before the city's infrastructure could really grow with it. So what you have all these years later today is still, if you've ever visited, a small college town. I mean, if you go downtown, you're not in a metropolis even all these decades later. It's still quaint, it's still charming, it's still small in comparison to its neighboring cities. But don't let that deceive you. The cool thing about Austin that throws a lot of people, a lot of the clients we've helped when coming here, is yes, the city itself is still small like a college town, but it's greater area, Williamson County and Travis County has since grown and expanded so, so much to where, yes, you have the small city, but then you're looking at all these areas in such a big state of Texas, by the way, that really makes Austin deceivingly large. And so the reason I bring that up is it could be so easy to talk about South Austin, East Austin, West Austin, North Austin, Central, Downtown Austin as the totality of what you can expect. But the reality of the situation is you have now all of these outskirts, all of these suburbs, all of these respective smaller cities that so many people are choosing to flock to, which we'll be getting to in this video. And just a heads up, in this video, unlike many of our previous videos, we're going to really just try and breeze through these areas, give you general, somewhat vague information, the cliff notes, if you will. But if you're wanting something more in depth, I encourage you to check out a lot of our other videos, which are much longer and much more specific to each particular area. And if you are curious about a certain area that we haven't yet done an extensive video on, a very long video on, go ahead and drop it in the comments down below so that we can know what to make in the future for you guys. Now, with all that out of the way, let's start with a very popular location, and that would be South Austin. So what you can expect in South Austin, generally speaking, is going to be a younger demographic, a younger professional type of scene. It isn't necessarily where a lot of families like to go, although we've seen it and it happens all the time, but it isn't the most popular place for families. Well, you can expect there is going to be what I like to call old town, meaning it's rich in history. A lot of the homes there are older. A lot of the homes there are quaint. You're going to have your historic boutique shops. You're going to have gift shops. You're going to have touristy things. And it really is a prime location within downtown Austin because you're close to South Congress. You're close to Zilker Park and you're close to so many of the things that people flock to Austin to do, which is why the area is in such high demand. We recently did a video titled what $400,000 and less can buy you in Austin, Texas. And one of the places 
we explored in that video was South Austin. And to give you an idea, we found one that was just shy of 400,000 and it was maybe 15, 1700 square feet, three bedroom, two bath from the 80s. That is your middle of the road option. That is what you can expect if you're not in a position to really stretch your budget and live larger. With its obvious proximity to the heart of downtown Austin, it's not going to be your suburban life. It's going to have tremendous walkability as opposed to suburban life. It's going to have endless things to do as opposed to suburban life. So if locally crafted beer is your thing, if pizza is your thing, if live music is your thing, if easy access to all of what Austin has to offer is your thing, then look no further than South Austin. Now let's move right along to East Austin. And if you're looking on the map, <laughs> it is east of downtown Austin. What you can expect in East Austin is going to be very, very similar to South Austin because of how close it is to South Austin. But what makes East Austin more distinct and unique is that it mixes the old historic culture of Austin, Texas, with a more artistic and eclectic culture. In my experience, you're going to see more murals in East Austin. In my experience, you're going to see some more exhibits or museums in East Austin. East Austin being such a rapidly growing neighborhood within the downtown Austin area is going to be a beautiful marriage of old and new, the yin and yang. And in terms of the homes there, you can really expect something on par with what you can get for South Austin. If you have a normal budget and you're not really looking to stretch it, you can expect much of the same, quaint houses, older houses, smaller houses. But the trade-off is you're right in the heart of everything that's cool, that's hip, that's popular. So in my opinion, East Austin really is underrated. The only thing that I can really take away from it is the growing conversation among Austinites that there is a homeless situation going on that the city of Austin is trying to change their talking about how they want to fix it and yeah, I don't know it's it's a messy situation I'm not saying it's unbearable and many people live in East Austin and they very happily live in East Austin but that is something since I keep it brutally honest on this channel that I thought I'd mention it is when you go to check it out not alarming, but it is something you notice uh, as opposed to South Austin or the other parts we're gonna get to in this video. Now moving right along, because as mentioned, this video is intended to be a little bit more expedient than our other thorough longer videos. Now we're gonna talk about West Austin. Now what's interesting about West Austin is it really is different out of left field when compared to South and East. Honestly, South and East are so similar, I could have just mentioned them under the same umbrella because I did have a lot of the same things to say about them, but West Austin is just a different flavor. West Austin is going to have bee caves, it's going to have lakeway, it's going to have Westlake, the Oasis, Steiner Ranch, and so much more. And what can be expected in these areas is going to be more exclusive, prime, expensive real estate. The demographic is going to shift a little bit. It's not going to be as many young professionals hustling in the hustle and bustle city of Austin. West Austin is going to be waterfront properties. West Austin is going to be more scenic. You're going to have the hills. And it's exclusive to the point where in that $400,000 or less video that we made, I didn't even mention it because not to say you can't find anything out there for 400 or less, but the pickings are so slim compared to the other areas in Austin that really your median for much of these places within West Austin is going to be in the 600s, the 700s. Certain areas and neighborhoods are even with a median of over a million dollars. The beautiful thing about West Austin, however, is that you are within such proximity still to downtown. You are within proximity to any other area within the greater Austin area, largely because you are close to Mopac, which is a very popular freeway here, and you're close to 183. So in addition to its scenery, in addition to its luxury, what you're also paying for is really a perfect mix of everything. You really have everything you want in West Austin. You're close to whatever stores you want. You're close to downtown. You're close to the birds. You've got the lake. You've got the hills. What more could you ask for? But you pay the price for it. Although I realize in this video, I'm not speaking to everyone who's you know, limited to a budget of three, four, five hundred thousand. 500,000. If you are someone who is moving from San Francisco or New York and you have money to play with, I would absolutely explore West Austin. It's not all going to be in the millions and a lot of it is going to be something you can find that you will fall in love with. In addition to that, we did do a vlog tour of West Austin. So if you're curious to see it as opposed to just hearing me talk about it, I do recommend you check that out. All right, breezing through our cliff notes here, we're gonna move right along to North Austin. And if you're wondering why I'm skipping Central Austin, in my opinion, if you didn't know this, 
Austin is home to the University of Texas. So in that very central part of downtown Austin, you really are going to find more students, you're going to find more on and off campus living. So for the sake of people relocating here who are adults, who are working professionals, who either have a family, I am going to pass on elaborating on what you can expect around the campus. It really is more or less what you can expect in any major college town. So yes, onward to North Austin. Now what's interesting about North Austin is it really pales in comparison to South or East Austin in terms of the vibe, in terms of the aesthetic. North Austin is where you're going to start seeing more shopping. North Austin is home to the Domain, which if you haven't heard of it, is a staple now within the greater Austin area because it is the mecca for shopping, for entertainment, for restaurants, for bar hopping, for clubs, for smoothie shops, for the Apple store, really anything you can think of. People love to live at, work at, and go to the Domain. So following suit, a lot of North Austin is going to be more contemporary. It's going to be more modern. It's going to have less of the downtown charm and more of a futuristic feeling. And it should go without saying that North Austin is also home to the tech hub here in Austin. If you haven't gotten the memo, Silicon Valley from San Francisco has been flocking here, creating what has been dubbed Silicon Hills here in Austin, Texas. And whether it's Facebook, Google, Apple, Amazon, Tesla, and so many more, they're all going to be situated within the Northern Austin area. So in North Austin, because of that, and because of all the people who are relocating here for tech jobs, you're going to find that the bang for your buck that you expect in Texas, that you even expect in a lot of the outskirts of Austin is going to be virtually non-existent. As opposed to South or East Austin, you're going to get even less for your money. Referencing our video 400 grand or less, the home I found as an example in North Austin is going to be even older and it's going to be even smaller just because of the demand there. But again, if you have more money to work with, your options obviously are going to open up. So if I am speaking to someone who fits that stereotype of coming to Austin for a tech job, they wanna be close with a commute of five to 10 minutes, and you can afford to live comfortably, look no further. North Austin is going to be your sanctuary. But if tech isn't your thing and you're coming for Austin for reasons other than that, I personally would not recommend it. Now, before moving on to other very popular areas for relocation within Austin, Texas, go ahead and drop a comment down below. Which areas did we miss? What agreements do you have? What disagreements do you have? What questions do you have for us? Go ahead, drop them all down below so that we can get involved with you guys. In addition, consider liking this video as well as it really helps our channel grow, defeats the algorithm, and tells us that we're doing a good enough job providing some value for you. And lastly, if you have anyone in your life, a parent, a friend, a spouse, a child, who you know is considering relocating to Austin, Texas, and would like to learn more about it, go ahead and share our content with them and spread the good word. Now moving right along, we've already covered the Metro Austin area and the popular locations you can expect to find within it. And now it's time we explore more of the outskirts of Austin where it really shows its size and really diversifies its portfolio with what it can offer you. Something else I'll mention is that North Austin, South Austin, East Austin, and Central Austin are all going to be zoned for the Austin Independent School District. So if you are a parent or if you are going to be a parent, you're thinking about starting a family, to give you an idea, according to Nietzsche.com, the Austin Independent School District is respectable, yes, but it isn't in the top tier of school districts. Those are what you're going to find in the later areas I touch on in this video. Not to say that the schools in South Austin or East Austin or North Austin aren't respectable, they are still going to get lower grades, lower scores, according to Nietzsche.com, as opposed to these other more suburban areas. And if you're really intent on learning about the schools here in Austin, Texas, we did make a video ranking the best districts in the whole area. So be sure to check that out if that's the information you're specifically after. So now let's finally talk about Pflugerville, Texas. What's important to note is that throughout Austin's evolution and growth, your two main methods of travel in terms of passing through Austin, Texas, are going to be 183 and are going to be I-35. So when looking at 183 and I-35, you're going to see Cedar Park, you're going to see Leander, you're going to see Round Rock, Georgetown, and what leads us to Pflugerville. Pflugerville is one of the first towns to really evolve and explode outside of the downtown metro area. And what's great about Pflugerville, what brings a lot of people to Pflugerville is simply the fact that you are within such proximity to either the tech world or downtown Austin. So if you're commuting to either place, Pflugerville is going to be a match made in heaven because you're not stuck in the thick of it. 
And another thing that attracts people to Pflugerville is that it's not going to be as far as Round Rock, it's not going to be as far as Georgetown or Leander for that matter. Pflugerville itself is also rich in culture, so you're going to have lots of different things to do. Similar to downtown Austin, you're going to have your local bars and shops, you're going to have your restaurants. There's even Lake Pflugerville, there's Typhoon, Texas, which is a local water park. You're going to have older, more affordable homes in Southwest Pflugerville, closer to downtown, and you're going to have newer, more expensive builds in Northeast Pflugerville. It really does have everything you want, and it has a wide variety of price ranges as well. And lastly, Pflugerville School District is quite respectable. I personally would put it above the Austin Independent School District. Niche.com would do the same. However, I wouldn't quite put it up there in the realm of Leander, Round Rock, or the Eanes Independent School District, which happens to be that Westlake area. So now let's move on to Round Rock, Texas, which is just a little bit north of Pflugerville, depending of course on where in Pflugerville you live. It can be a five minute drive or it can be a 20 minute drive. Round Rock happens to be the largest city outside of downtown Austin. It is also home to Dell, as in Dell Computers, which always astonishes me because I expect these big companies to be in San Francisco or something like that. But no, Dell is located at the heart of Round Rock. And in Round Rock, you're going to have Dell Diamond. You're going to have a very charming downtown as well. You're going to have Round Rock Premium Outlets. You're going to have Ikea. Round Rock really is, even though it's its own city, the definition of suburban life. Whereas Pflugerville, in my opinion, kind of is a hybrid of suburbia and the downtown life. Round Rock is full blown suburban life. Very commercial, very big box, and it's going to have a number of master planned communities. The one to note would be Terra Vista. It has a golf course, it has an elementary school, it has a pool, it has a number of different builders so that no home is quite the same as the other. And a neighborhood like that, for example, will range starting from the mid threes all the way to around a million bucks. So you do have your pick of the bunch. In addition, a lot of people who live in Round Rock and actually Pflugerville as well, like to live there because of the proximity to their work. A lot of people in Round Rock work in Round Rock, and if they don't, they're just a quick 15 minute drive from the Tech Hub or maybe 20, 25 from downtown. And lastly, with Round Rock, this is arguably the greatest school district in the totality of Austin, Texas. It has about 40,000 students. It has a superb graduation rate. It has very respectable ACT and ICT scores. And it recently got Kalahari, which is the country's largest indoor water park, which also has an arcade, which also has shopping and fountains. So yeah, Round Rock is a fantastic option if you'd like to be within arm's reach of downtown, but in your own suburban bubble. Now moving even further north, another 10 to 20 minutes above Round Rock, you're going to find Georgetown. And Georgetown is a very popular place for relocation, at least from the clients that we've helped. One of the biggest downsides to Georgetown, however, is its distance from downtown or even its distance from the tech world. Um, I keep mentioning that, I don't mean to be redundant, but why do so many people relocate to Austin? Aside from its bang for your buck, the tech jobs. So yes, Georgetown is going to be, depending on traffic, about 40 to 45 minutes north of downtown and maybe about a half hour from the domain tech area. However, what's great about Georgetown is unlike any other suburb, city, town outside of downtown Austin, Georgetown is the most quaint, it's the most charming. It has a small town, it has its own downtown, it has wineries, it has a local theater for comedy. It has a number of nature locations as well, starting with Lake Georgetown and a number of other public parks. And it's home to its own very highly rated university. So Georgetown really does have it all. If you want a home on acres, look to Georgetown. If you want a brand new build near some land, look to Georgetown. If you want something historic, 1800s, mid 1900s, look to Georgetown. And if you want bang for your buck affordability, look to Georgetown because you could probably find a $400,000 house there with a pool, maybe your theater room near a golf course. Lastly, in Georgetown, it has its own Georgetown Independent School District, which again, not to be redundant, is a very respectable school district, but smaller and not necessarily as comparable in terms of grades and scores, according to Niche.com, as perhaps Round Rock or Leander. And since I mentioned it, let's move on to Leander, Texas. Now, the first thing I'll mention about Leander, similar to Georgetown, just a little bit west, is its distance from downtown and the tech areas. Leander, unlike say Round Rock, doesn't have any major employers. So chances are, unless you're working from home, which has been a blessing ever since COVID happened, unless you're working from home, you're going to be commuting somewhere. And Leander is pretty north of downtown. It's about 
I'd say 30 to 35 minutes from downtown, maybe 20 to 25 from the tech area, all depending on traffic, of course, and where you are in Leander, Texas. But what's great about Leander is that it's been dubbed by me and by many others, the relocation haven. It is an investor's dream, for example, or it is a homeowner's dream who might be relocating again later to buy in Leander and watch it appreciate like crazy. The reason for this is that even though Leander currently is dare I say boring, I don't mean to piss off anyone watching this living in Leander, but there just isn't that much to do as of now. See, the reason why it's a relocation haven is because it's on a trajectory to absolutely explode. Leander has plans to build Northline, which is essentially going to be the sequel to the domain. It's going to be absolutely massive and it's going to really put Leander on the map. In addition to that, Leander is also building a lagoon, which is going to be full of restaurants and shopping. So that's going to create more people moving to Leander and that's going to create a boom in its economy, a spike in its job market. But again, that hasn't happened yet. So as it stands right now in Leander, you've got grocery stores, you've got schools, you've got churches. Um, I will say you've got good parks though. One of my favorites is the Veterans Memorial Park. I've taken my Corgi there a number of times. Beautiful place to let your dog run around and have fun with the other dogs. But that's about it. If you wanna do anything really fun, you look out of Leander, the same goes with jobs as well. Now where Leander really excels is its affordability. Leander is an easy place to get into. The previously owned homes might range between four and 450 on average, but a new build before options can be as cheap as the high 200s or the low 300s. And what's really cool is that Leander also offers quite a range if you have a lot of money to play with. Similar to West Austin, the Westlake area with the hills and the scenery, Leander has something similar in its Crystal Falls community and in its Treviso community. Homes over there can go easily over a million dollars. You have great landscapes, you're elevated. So if you do have money to play with and you don't necessarily wanna be in West Austin, but you want to have something similar in your own cozy, tucked away place removed from the city, look no further than Leander. And of course, you knew I would get to it since I mentioned it earlier, the schools in Leander. In my opinion, Leander is the greatest school district that the totality of the greater Austin area has to offer. Now, many could easily argue, and I wouldn't necessarily disagree that Round Rock could be the best, and when you're looking at the two, it's really all about splitting hairs because they are both so respectable and held in such high esteem. The Leander Independent School District has about 30,000 students with elite graduation rates and fantastic ACT and SAT test scores. In addition to that, Leander is always building some new state-of-the-art football stadium or a new performance auditorium, or in my opinion, it seems like they're spitting out a brand new school each and every year. So if affordability is your thing, if luxury is your thing, if nice, quiet, tranquil, peaceful life away from downtown is your thing, look to Leander. But if you're wanting walkability, if you're wanting endless things to do, it might not be for you. Lastly, I'll mention Cedar Park, Texas. Now, Cedar Park is interesting. It holds a special place in my heart because I spent a lot of time there growing up, but it's also perhaps the most boring of all the other places. I would say Leander's similar to it in terms of things to do, but as I mentioned, Leander has a trajectory of so much growth and explosion, whereas Cedar Park, is kind of established. It's, it's already kind of had its own peak. It's also significantly smaller than Round Rock, Pflugerville, Georgetown. But what's cool about it is it's kind of like this underrated tucked away suburb. It is its own city, it has its own zip code, but I'm just gonna call it a suburb because it's easier. It's really just its own tucked away suburb between Leander and downtown, between Round Rock and downtown. It's just kind of there. What is great about Cedar Park is that it does have an abundance of green. It's very pretty, it's very safe, and it has quite a few parks you can go to for picnics, for fishing, for baseball, for skateboarding, so on and so forth. But similar to Leander, You've got your grocery stores, you've got your churches, you've got your, your shopping, you have great shopping centers, new ones, you've got a Costco, but that's about it. However, what's cool is that Cedar Park being south of Leander, for example, and just a little bit north of North Austin, you're pretty close to the tech hub. So in my opinion, a large number of people who live in Cedar Park are people who work in the tech field, a bit of a younger demographic, maybe 30s or 40s, who are starting families. That is that perfect storm, if you will, um, that Cedar Park has to offer. If you drive five minutes south, you're in North Austin. If you drive 
10 minutes east, you're in Round Rock. If you drive 10 minutes north, you're in Leander. So it is well located as well. Your homes in Cedar Park, to give you an idea, are going to be pretty middle of the road. You're going to find a lot of them in the four, five, six, and seven hundreds. You might find some a million plus, but it's not going to have such a selection per se as Leander, Texas. Also, if you're wanting to get into something cheap and new, Cedar Park has some, but it also won't have quite as much to choose from as compared to say Leander, Georgetown, or Round Rock. Cedar Park is great for those who want something a little more suburban than Pflugerville, or who might not have found something very affordable or reasonable in North Austin. So there you have it. And I do realize I didn't touch on Hutto, for example, or Taylor, or Liberty Hill, or even central downtown Austin. The aim has been to focus on the most well-known areas, the most popular areas, the closest areas to downtown, and what they each have to offer. So whether it is Leander, whether it is Georgetown, whether it's Cedar Park, whether it's South Austin, whether it's West Austin, whether it's East Austin, so on and so forth, only you can know which one is really right for you. And hopefully we've done a good enough job informing you and giving you a decent idea of what you can expect. What we love is talking to you and figuring out what it is you need, where your work is, what your lifestyle is, so that we can place you in that perfect spot. But again, the only way we can do that is by you reaching out to us. So do not hesitate. Whether you're nine days away or 90, go ahead and shoot us a text, send us an email, or give us a call any day of the week, any time of day. Again, if you're wanting to learn more about one of these areas, check out the other videos we've made, or if we haven't made it already, drop it in the comments down below what you'd like to learn more about, as well as any agreements, disagreements, or questions you have for us, go ahead, we'd love to get involved. And again, we put out tons of new content each and every week, all in regards to living in this great city of Austin, Texas, such as this one and many others. So if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to this channel and ringing that little bell so that you're notified each and every time we put out a new video. Consider liking this video as well as it really helps our channel grow, defeats the algorithm, and tells us that we've done a good enough job providing some value for you. Share this video as well with anyone you know in your life who is relocating to Austin, Texas and would like to learn more. And until the next one, you guys, my name is Frank. I am your host. This is Living in Austin, Texas, and we will absolutely catch you later.